Hey there, how are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, you well? Yes, I'm good. Oh, that's me talking. Sorry about that. Yeah, Steve Hewlett, comedy ventriloquist. This year I'm celebrating my 30th year as a ventriloquist. Uh, but today is not about me, is it? No, it's not. No, it's about the Doddy Do. We're celebrating Ken Dodd's 90th birthday today, and um, I have been asked to perform uh, a little spot at the end of the show. So there was going to be a nice dinner, celebrate the lunch, and the fact that he is now Sir Ken Dodd, which is uh, about time. I know. And um, so uh, really excited about doing my act because today I've got a very special surprise for Ken and the whole audience if they don't already know what's coming up. So uh, I've got a new character made up for this show. And so uh, that will be revealed right before Ken's speech. And so uh, I'm glad I'm going on before him because I've got to get back to work in two weeks. So um, it's going to be a very, very special day. There's lots of very special guests. And I, I'm very honored to be here to be celebrating with Ken. And I toured with him for about five years. And he's, he's a true legend. And uh, it's, it's a true honor to be working with him today and to celebrate a, very, a great milestone and one of our comedy legends, Sir Ken Dodd. Yeah. Nice to see you, Ken. A thousand years. Didn't you used to be? Because I used to I be. I don't hear well. that. That's the problem with it. President. Couldn't manage that. Okay. There now. Shut the back, chest out. Excellent. Yes, please. Here we go. And again. Nice and fresh. Yeah, what a team. That's the way. Okay. <laughs> Straight at me, please. And all smile. Your best smile. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks of jokes by the score. 
and then lots and lots more. All parts of the whole that is Doddy. Yes, our hearts belong to Doddy, and you may think that that's rather odd. Both our hearts belong to Daddy, devastatedly dab diddy dog. Now we ask you, everybody, is us loving a comic incest? Why do our hearts belong to Dolly? Cause Sir Ken is it's quite simply the on Ken looking after the younger artists over the years. 22 years ago, I remember some advice I got from Sir Ken, and uh, congratulations, about time, Sir Ken, that's lovely to say. Um, I got some advice and Ken said, make yourself unavailable, Steve. Always remember that, make yourself unavailable uh, to the agents. I haven't worked for the last eight years, so it's but it's wonderful to be here. And, um, Thank you, Sir Ken. I'll never forget any of the time Ken gave me and other, other artists. We always talk about how generous he was with his time. Now, um, some of you may not know who I am. So I was on Britain's Got Talent four years ago, and uh, I was the one in the middle of Simon Cowell and Sunita, the puppets. And I was going to get a Sir Ken Dodd puppet, actually, but then I thought, I can't have a puppet that's going to be on stage four hours after I've left the building, <laughs> because it will still be working, and I'll, I'll be out of the building, I won't be there. And that's, that's a joke, because he's still talking and I'm not there, and it's still, that's one of the jokes that I do. And so, uh, I also, being a ventriloquist, I've had lots of, lots of laughs. I tried it once, tried it once at a funeral. <laughs> that was, uh, okay, um, there was another one, another time when um, I got to the airport, and I put all my boxes through the airport, you know, and when it gets to the security, they can see inside your luggage on the screen, and I have a bit of a giggle, I stand back and go, <laughs> yeah, Some of you are laughing, they don't laugh at Heathrow Airport 4 o'clock in the morning at security. And, uh, and that's when they got the glove out, took me to a room, I found out what it was like to be one of my own puppets. <laughs> yeah. so but, speaking, of, speaking of puppets and puppeteers, I became a better puppeteer after I got married, because Every time my wife leaves the room, I'm always doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, actually, not to know, I used two, didn't I? Sorry, so one. <laughs> I'm not a bigamist, I'm a, I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Arthur Larga. Oh, here we are, my ladies. Mm. It's like an Arthur Larga convention, it's one of the on every table. <laughs> Hello, sir. Sure. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, I like this. Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> so, uh, we are celebrating here 90th birthday coming up very soon. I know, Sir Ken. Yeah, I know, Sir Ken. <laughs> Read his lips. Okay, right, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because no one else is. Okay, right, so. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I'm in uh, esteemed a company today. I'm, I'm very, very proud to be here t today, you know, for, for Maximilian Appreciation Society, my brother, Water Rats and uh, the, the British Musical Society to be celebrating a wonderful birthday. I'm really, really pleased to be here uh, and to, to represent other ventriloquists that you have gave a chance that Dennis Spicer, Arthur Worsley, Neville King, all of those greats that I admired over many, many years. So uh, we're going to have to say goodbye. I don't want to go. You're going to have to say, I don't want to go. So now I'm just going to tell them. If you see me walking about, please come up and say hello. You see me walking around, you need to go and see some of the guys. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've been wonderful. What a wonderful way to celebrate a beautiful man uh, for a lovely birthday. Thank you so much. And Anne as well. It's beautiful to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for saying happy birthday, sir.
and love and friendship. It's wonderful, fabulous people. My inspirational people. My biggest inspiration, when I was about, uh, oh, maybe about uh, 14, I think, there was an advertisement in the Liverpool Echo. It said, entertainers wanted to entertain Her Majesty's forces. So, uh, Her Majesty's forces, it was an audition in a school. I went along there and it turned out, Her Majesty's forces turned out to be the ATC cadets. <laughs> <laughs> they had a monthly concert to try and uh, get recruits. And then I met a lady there. She passed away about two years ago, a lady in Liverpool. I, I'm doing this, I'm just paying homage. A lady called Hilda Fallon. Hilda Fallon. This lady had a dancing school called Theatre School. And uh, she came to me, she said, uh, would you like to uh, do a show with us? We're doing, we're doing a nightclub uh, on Sunday, doing a club over in, in Ellesmere Port. So, uh, yeah, sure, so I went along there. Uh, and I went into it. Now, the only nightclubs I'd ever seen on the screen were Puzzly Barkley. Uh, nightclubs with huge chorus girls swanning down black marble staircases <laughs> with, with, with ostrich girls. <laughs> so when I went to do Flat Lane Labour Club, <laughs> 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 he was something of a really surprise. You see, one of the little old men with, with caps on, sucking pints of beer. Anyway, uh, that was when it started, and I started playing the clubs. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was my education, that was my apprenticeship. Because when you play the clubs, you know, they're small audiences, like this today. And you learn how to love an audience. You learn how to love them. You learn to learn how to respect them and, and, and treat them. There's no. I think it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And now I've reached this age. Old comedians never die. Yes. Old men. Old men never. I've had some struggles at Glasgow. You would ask three questions. I would ask journalists. They say, "When are you going to retire?" The answer is never. Because you can't think of any way of spending your life, any better way of spending your life than slaving over a hot audience. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you never, you don't do a show. The correct way to do uh, a turn, you don't do it at an audience. You do it with an audience, and you 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 play an audience like you play a like you play an instrument. You know what the hot spots are. You know where they need a little bit of coaxing. You know where you can flirt. So, <laughs> I never meet this. I never meet this lady when she's eating. This. Not <laughs> <laughs> even meet in restaurants. Chef comes. <laughs> we've uh, we we in the in the, in the, the best the best job in the world. That John is to be in in shows. I'm wonderful. I'm not going to keep this one here now. But you, you do get a bit more than when you get get ancient. Yeah. I, I like to, uh, there, there are advantages in, in growing old. The last show I did at the Palladium, and they said it would be, I was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the staff there, the lovely people, uh, they, uh, they, present, they they give me, in charge, they play me take posh, they give me a bottle, you know, a bottle, yeah, to put me in retirement with a warm spoon. <laughs> Years ago, I used to be a label. That's <laughs> not <laughs> so, being in show business is, 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 is my life. It's my life. I mean, I like it well. She's a bluebell girl, you know. Yeah. Bluebell girl, yeah. Mm. In fact, like Manchester Opera House. I had a, a, a song we're doing very well, which I called Love is Like a Violin. So, Dickie Hurum said, Look at this big scene. You go on, I'm going to put a, a, a gauze behind you. And then behind the gauze, what's called bleed through the gauze, this huge violin, oh, the size of these two tables. Huge white violin prop. And the bluebell girls are in ballet. And Madam here is on top of the bluebell, dropped the violin, and then fell off. <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of my bloody song. <laughs> Love it like a bang, crash ball. <laughs> You know, uh, who makes you laugh? And then they say, what, what do you think of the, uh, the, the, the new, the young comedians of today on telly? Well, I said, well, they mean well. 
I blame the parents. Shouldn't give them fizzy drinks. <laughs> And I am I'm a, a, a philosopher now, like one of the joys of being uh, mature is you can give advice to younger people uh, and hope that they'll, their, their lives will become better for, for your advice. And I said, uh, you know, when things look black, send them to the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> and all the wise sayings that have been passed down in Proverbs, you can lead a horse to water, but a pencil must be led. <laughs> Never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Because if you do it today and you enjoy it, you can do it again tomorrow. <laughs> and a word, two pieces of philosophy I'd like to pass on to you, ladies and gentlemen. Two pieces of wisdom and philosophy. The first is for all the gentlemen, for all the men. Gentlemen, love. If ever, if ever you find yourself arguing with an idiot, make sure he isn't doing the same. <laughs> Second piece of wisdom, and I said it to ladies and gentlemen, ne you'll, you'll always remember that never, never, ever, never, never, never take a sleeping pill and a Senecot on the same night. <laughs> did you look at your watch? I did. How oh, dare you? <laughs> oh, dare you? It's a bloody calendar you need for me, not watch. <laughs> Good health, happiness, and God bless you all. <laughs>